In today's chess video, we are going to look at 32 basic checkmate patterns that you absolutely must know. No matter how good a chess player you are, to win your games, you need to be able to spot these patterns, whether to save yourself or to checkmate your opponent. So stay with me till the end and keep watching Chess Talk. Let's start with the Anastasia's mate. In such a mating pattern, we see the knight and the rook working together like this to trap the opponent's king. You will also see an opponent piece like this one which blocks the king from coming here and that's what results in a checkmate. Now check out this game. Can you find a similar mating pattern for white? You can pause the video here if you want to solve this on your own. Well we begin with knight e7 check, pushing the king into the corner. Queen h7 check, that's a queen sacrifice. King takes on h7 is forced. And finally rook to h5 is a checkmate. Okay, now let's see the hook mate. This also involves a rook and a knight, but we also have a pawn along with this opponent piece which blocks the opponent king from escaping. In this mate, as you can see here, the rook is protected by the knight and the knight is protected by the pawn. This is what we call the hook. Now check out this game and try to find a similar mating pattern for white. So we begin with the queen sacrifice. If king goes here, then queen b8 is a mate. So black obviously has to take and now we have rook e8 check. If king d7 then rook d8 is a mate and if king b7 then rook b8 is a mate. The rook is hooked to the knight and the knight is hooked to the pawn. Both these pawns are blocking the king so the king has no safe squares to go. Alright, the next mating pattern is the Arabian mate in which the knight and the rook work together like this and trap the opposing king in a corner. The rook is right next to the king protected by the knight which is also covering this square to prevent the king from escaping. Take a look at this game. Can you find the mating sequence for white? Alright, we begin with knight f6 check. He can't take because of this pin so king h8 is the only move. Now rook h6 check, that's a rook sacrifice. If he takes with the pawn then rook g8 is a checkmate. And if he does not take and blocks with the knight, then again rook h7 is the Arabian mate. Okay, now let's check out our fourth mating pattern which is the corner mate. The corner mate works by confining the king to the corner with a rook or a queen and then using a knight to deliver the checkmate. Look at this game. It is white's turn. Can you find the winning continuation using this pattern? We start with the queen sacrifice. Black has to take with the bishop and finally we have knight to c7 trapping the king in the corner and that's what we call a corner mate. Next we have the Vukovic mate. Here the rook delivers mate while it is supported by a third piece and as you can see the knight is used to block the king's escape squares. Let's see if you can apply it in this game. You need to find the winning continuation for white. Well, we start with knight a7 check. If king b8, then rook e8 is simply a checkmate. So black plays king d8. Now we have knight c6 check. King comes back and then you have this in the face kind of a mate with rook c7. Okay, now let's look at some mating combinations with the rook and the bishop. First, let's check out the opera mate. In such a mating pattern, we attack the king on the back rank with the rook and we have this bishop to protect it. You will also find an opponent pawn or some other piece except a knight which will block this square and that will result in a checkmate. This checkmate was named after its implementation by Paul Murphy and that game was famously known as the opera game. Anyway, in this position, can you use this tactic to checkmate the black king? You can pause the video here if you want. Okay, so here's how it works. We again start with a queen sacrifice. It's a check and black is forced to take with the king. Now we play bishop to e6. It's a double check. King has to move. d8 is the only safe square. And we finish it off with rook to c8. And that's a checkmate. Alright, now let's look at the Reti's mate. In this, we trap the opponent's king in between four of its own pieces that are situated on its escape squares. We attack with the bishop that is protected by a rook or a queen. 
and this is how it looks. The Rati's mate is named after Richard Rati who delivered such a checkmate on just the 11th move of his game. This was the position he was playing as white and he started off with a queen sack. King captures then bishop g5 is a double check so the king has to move. If he goes to e8 then rook d8 is the opera mate that I showed you earlier. But black went to c7 and here Rati played bishop to d8 supported by the rook. See how the king is trapped between his own pieces and that's how we witness the Rati's mate. Moving on, the next checkmate I'm going to show you is the Murphy's mate which is named after the great Paul Murphy. You can achieve this mate by using the bishop to check the king while your rook and this opponent pawn help to confine it. Let's check out this game. Here we need to mate the black king. Can you find the winning continuation? We need to get rid of this pawn first, so rook g7 check. King h8 is the only legal move. Now rook f7, it's a discovered check with the bishop. King g8, then again rook g7 check. King h8 again. And now that we have eliminated the pawn, we bring back the rook to give a check again. This time the king cannot go here because of the rook. So he blocks, captures, blocks, captures. And that's a checkmate, which we call the Murphy's mate. The next pattern that I'm going to show you is the Pillsbury's mate, which is named after Harry Pillsbury. It's kind of a variation of the Murphy's mate. In this, it's the other way around. The rook delivers the checkmate and the bishop prevents the king from running away to the corner square. Let's see if you can apply it in this game. White to play, can you find the mating sequence? We begin with queen g7 check. Knight takes on g7 is forced. Rook takes, king h8 is forced. Now what? The best move here is a rook sacrifice. Rook to g8 check. King takes and now we have rook to g1 check. The king cannot go here because of the bishop and this check cannot be blocked. Well, he can block with the queen but again, it's a checkmate. So that's the Pillsbury's mate. Moving on, let's quickly look at some checkmates with the queen and the rook. The first one we are going to see is the swallow's tail mate. In this mate, you will attack the enemy king with a queen that is protected by a rook or some other piece. As you can see, the opponent's own pieces block it from escaping. This somewhat resembles a swallow's tail and hence the name. Next, we have the kill box mate which occurs when a rook is next to the opposing king and the queen defends it. They form a box like this to trap the king, hence we call it the kill box mate. Moving on, the next pattern is the triangle mate. Here, the queen delivers a mate while it is supported by a rook. The king is also restricted from moving behind because this pawn is blocking it. See how the white queen, the white rook and the black pawn on d7 resemble a triangle around the black king. That's why we call this a triangle mate. Now let's look at one of the most common checkmates that you will see in a chess game and it's the back rank mate which occurs when a king is trapped behind its own pawns like this and it gets mated by a rook or a queen. Now check out this game. Can you use this idea to checkmate the black king? You cannot straight away go for queen f8 check because both these pieces are defending that square. So the idea is to first remove one of the defenders. We start with queen f7 check. The king has to go to the corner. Now we can go for queen f8 check. Bishop f8 is forced. And now we go for rook to f8 and that's a back rank mate. Now let's look at another interesting pattern which shows how deadly the rooks on the 7th rank can be. Look how beautifully both these rooks eliminate the pawns, harass the king and deliver a checkmate. This mating pattern is popularly called the blind swine mate. And on that note, please don't turn a blind eye to this like button. If you appreciate my efforts, then show your support and hit that thumbs up button below. Next, we have one of my favorite checkmates which is the smothered mate. This mating pattern is possible only if the enemy king is completely surrounded by his own pieces. This also highlights the unique jumping ability of the knight which delivers a mate all by his own. Let's check out this game. Although the black king is not yet fully trapped but white can force a smothered mate here. Can you find it? Okay, so we start with a discovered check by moving away the knight. If he goes here then queen d7 is a checkmate. So king moves to b8. Then knight d7 check. 
again king c8 now knight b6 is a double check again he goes back and then we sack the queen black takes with the rook and finally knight to d7 is a beautiful smothered checkmate after the smothered mate we will now see the suffocation mate it's somewhat similar to the smothered mate but here along with the knight you will need a bishop or a queen the knight checks the king and the bishop suffocates him you will also see a few enemy pieces like these which further trap the king ending up in a checkmate let's try to apply it in this game can you trap this black king with your knight and bishop yes of course you will start with bishop h6 check black has only one square king g8 now the king is trapped and you just need to deliver the final blow how can you do it you need to go knight e7 but this queen is defending this square so let's bring our rook into the game rook e3 with the idea of rook g3 mate he cannot free up any of these squares for his king so the only way to prevent this is queen c7 but now the queen is overloaded she has to defend both these squares so we play rook g3 check queen captures and finally we play knight e7 to suffocate the king and deliver a checkmate moving on to the anderson's mate which is named after adolf anderson this mating pattern features a rook or a queen supported by a pawn or a bishop as it checkmates the opposing king so this is how it looks now in this position can you deliver such kind of a checkmate okay we start off with a queen sacrifice king takes and now rook h5 check he can't take because of this pin king g8 is the only legal move and finally we have rook h8 which we call the anderson's mate moving on we have the pawn mate as the name suggests it's a pattern where the pawn checkmates the opponent's king look at this game can you find a way to apply this idea here if you go to d5 then the king can simply go to d7 so you need to block this square first how can you do that well it's quite straightforward first we go for a queen check this king cannot go anywhere he can only block with either of his knights or the queen but it does not matter let's say he blocks with the knight and now d5 works because this square is covered and the pawn delivers a checkmate all right i will now show you some checkmate patterns with the queen and the pawns let's begin with the dovetail mate or the cozio mate in this the mating queen is one square diagonal from the opposing king just like you see here and these two escape squares of the king are blocked by its own pieces now let's see if you can use this pattern to win this game as white so how do you start you don't want the king to go back to safety so we start with bishop b5 check if the king goes here then we can mate him in the next few moves like this so his best option is to take with the rook now queen c7 check pushing the king to the center then queen c4 check he takes the other bishop and finally you have this dovetail mate this pawn supports the queen to deliver the mate and these two squares are blocked by black's own pieces so that's how it looks next is the damiano's mate which is one of the oldest methods of checkmating and many of you might be aware of this it works by confining the king with a pawn or a bishop and then using the queen to initiate the final blow most people generally try to execute this idea against the castled king anyway let's take a look at this game can you implement the damiano's mate and checkmate this black king all right first the rook sacrifice king takes again a rook check king moves back again a rook sacrifice king takes now the queen check king goes back and we deliver the final blow with queen a7 checkmate or what we call the damiano's mate moving on the next pattern is the lolly's mate this mate involves getting into your opponent's fian chateau position with a queen and a pawn generally against a castle king let's look at how this can work out in a game as you can see black is completely cramped up here and you need to somehow break through the first step would be to double up our rooks attacking the queen is the best option for black rook h7 check queen takes rook takes back and now if he takes the rook we can easily finish it off like this and if he does not take then rook h8 check now he is forced to take and finally we can deliver a checkmate just like this and that's the lolly's mate 
The next one is the appellate mate which looks like this. The queen delivers the mate and the king is trapped between his own pieces. Here's another example where these guys act like the shoulder pieces of the king and hence we have the name appellate mate. Moving on, let's check out the Greco's mate. In this checkmate pattern, the enemy king is trapped in a corner with the help of a bishop. And then we use the queen or the rook to deliver the mate. So how can you apply this tactic in this game? It's white to move and it's a mate in four. Let's start with knight e7 double check. The king has to move to the corner. Then knight g6 check. Pawn takes and now h takes on g3 is a discovered check again. Queen h4 is the only option and finally rook takes and there we have the Greco's mate. Alright, let's check out the Max Lang's mate. In this mating pattern, we use the combination of the queen and the bishop to deliver a checkmate like this one. Let's see if you can apply this same pattern in this game. So how do we begin? We start with queen a5 check. He has to block with the queen. Now we can give queen d8 check. King a7 is the only move. If you go queen b8 check, then he can escape from here. So we need to get the bishop to cover this square. We do that by first bishop b8 check, king a8, now bishop c7, discover check, king a7 again, and ultimately we finish it off with queen b8 checkmate. Now let's understand the two bishops mate with the help of this example. We are targeting this black king and we need to mate with these two bishops. It's quite simple. First, a queen sacrifice, it's a check, bishop takes, and finally, bishop c6 is a checkmate with the two bishops. Moving on, we have the Bowden's mate, which also has two bishops, but they are on these kind of crisscross diagonals trapping the king. Here's a good example of how you can apply this in your games. Look, this bishop is already covering this diagonal. All we need to do is deliver a check with a piece that cannot be captured. So we start with queen c6 check, pawn takes, and now you have bishop a6. And that's a checkmate. Next, we have the Bellestra mate. This looks somewhat similar to the Bowden's mate, but here you have a bishop and a queen instead of two bishops. The bishop delivers the checkmate while the queen blocks the remaining escape squares. This is how it looks. Alright, the next mating pattern is the Blackburn's mate. This involves two bishops and a knight going against the castled king. This is how it looks on the board. It's quite rare to get this in a game, but nevertheless, you should be knowing about it. Alright, the next checkmate we are going to look at is the corridor mate. In fact, this includes a wide range of ideas. But to summarize, we can say that it simply means that the king is trapped in a corridor, which could be a file like this, or a rank like this, or a diagonal like this one. I hope you got the point. That's the corridor mate. Now let's jump on to some really basic checkmate patterns, which I think most of you would be knowing, but still, let's quickly check them out. The first one is the fool's mate, which occurs in the opening, and it is the fastest checkmate possible in the game of chess. It occurs after these opening moves, and we end up with a two-move checkmate. This can happen mostly with new players, so just be careful if you're starting off. The next one is the scholar's mate, which is also known as the four-move checkmate. The main idea here is to get your queen and bishop out early and attack on this weak f7 square to deliver a checkmate just like this. I guess almost all of you would have tried this out on your opponents at some point and you would have won as well. In fact, even the great Mikhail Tal fell for this trap against his brother when he was 9 years old. So just be careful about this. Anyway, the next mating pattern I want to show you is the legal's mate. This is also quite a common opening trap where white sacrifices his queen to trap the black king just like this. I have made a complete video on the legal's mate. You can check it out by tapping on this i button above. Okay, so here's a chess puzzle for you all. It is white's turn and you need to checkmate the black king. Can you find the mating pattern? Do share your answers in the comment section below. This is your test. Let's see how many of you can solve it. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out these other videos as well that are showing up on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next one.